Have you ever seen something so outrageous that makes you wonder how does that even exist and why does that exist? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you seven lenses that are exactly that. I spent the last two weeks researching the most extreme and bizarre lenses that have ever existed and I learned everything I could about these lenses. And boy, do I have a lot to share. And so, let's just jump into it. When would you consider a lens too wide? When objects start to get distorted? When your shadow starts to creep into every one of your photos? or when you can shoot objects when they're actually behind you. Yup, this lens does all of that. It has a whopping 270 degree field of view, which is 50 degrees more than the next widest lens, the measly Nikon 6mm f2.8 lens from 1972, which sold for 100,000 British pounds or about 160,000 US dollars back in 2012. Now this lens looks and feels like it's from out of this world because it was literally designed to look like a spaceship beaming up your camera. This is the C4 Precision Optics 4.9mm f3.5 lens for full frame. The lens was originally designed as an April Fool's joke by the lens rental team in 2015, which was brought to life in 2019 and could be yours for a whopping $40,000, which is still more affordable than that 50mm old Nikon lens. It weighs 28.6 pounds and comes with a built-in tripod array. It also comes with the iris and focus rings already geared, so it's already ready for accessories. However, it's only available in Sony E-mount, but it does have LWS rails for mounting on larger Sony cinema cameras. And only three of these lenses were ever made. So why did they make this lens? Well, the C4 Precision Optics team says just to prove it could be done, but it could also be used for full dome imaging, VR, and 360 video. Now, since we're on the topic of lenses that originated from jokes, let's talk about the fastest lens to ever be created. For this lens, we're jumping back to the 1960s. During this time, the entire photographic industry was competing on trying to create the fastest lenses possible. Canon had just released their 50mm f0.95 lens, and that was taking the industry by storm. But however legendary this lens was on paper, it was both loved and hated for its terrible performance in real world situations. This lens went against camera manufacturer Zeiss's philosophy on how lenses should be designed. They said the absolute maximum aperture does not count. What counts is the maximum aperture at which a lens is able to reproduce a quality image. And so Zeiss wasn't having any of this. After Phonokina that year, Zeiss went home to rummage through their shelves and rapidly created a new lens called the Super Q Gigantar, a 40mm f0.33 lens. A monstrous lens that was bootstrapped together out of an old condenser lens along with various other pieces laying around. Now, sorry to butcher this, but the Q stood for Quatsch, which translates to nonsense in German. The values of the lens were arbitrarily decided and the lens was never made to be functional. Zeiss just wanted to poke fun at the fast glass fad. This lens went up for auction in 2011 at the Westlich Photographica auction and was sold as the fastest lens ever created for 60,000 euros. So this left me with the question, what is the fastest lens ever made that actually works? And I went down a rabbit hole for this one. F0.95 is fast, but unlike the 1960s, this really isn't that uncommon anymore. So how about 0.85? Well, there's the HandyVision IBLUX 40mm F.85, which is faster, but it still doesn't hold the crown for fastest. So how about 0.75? And well, this is where I started to find some really interesting contenders. I discovered a whole array of X-ray lenses, lenses that were specifically designed for X-ray machines to produce usably bright copies of very dim phosphorus images. Because of the optical design of these lenses, to get the correct distance to the sensor, these lenses couldn't just be adapted to be used with any camera. However, that didn't stop some people from trying. To make these lenses work, it required you to modify your camera to make room for the housing of the lens, which usually meant you had to remove the shutter from your camera, which is a project I wouldn't recommend anyone attempting unless you had an insane background in these type of things and a sacrificial camera lying around. So I was pretty much ready to disqualify these lenses from the list entirely until I found one x-ray lens that was a Kickstarter project by Experimental Optics. They released a 50mm f0.75 lens that could be used for full frame. Now, now, a lot of these names are really hard to say. So again, I'm sorry. <laughs> it originally was an Udeft X-ray lens, an optics company from the Netherlands. This lens was magically adapted to the Leica M mount, which could essentially be adapted to any other mirrorless lens mount. However, this lens had no diaphragm, which meant it was always wide open and had fixed focus, but it did take some really gnarly photos. So this one gets an asterisk. But funny enough, this still isn't the fastest lens I found. 
The fastest lenses I was able to find was actually designed for NASA to be used for their Apollo missions to capture the far side of the moon in 1966, which funny enough was created by the same people who created the super cute Gigantar. That's right, Zeiss is back again. Even though they loved to poke fun at the fast glass fad during the 1960s, they actually ended up creating the fastest lens ever, a 50mm f0.7 lens for medium format, which is even more impressive. This lens is two whole stops faster than the fastest lenses we use today. Only 10 copies were ever made. One Zeiss kept for themselves, six went to NASA, and three went to a man named Stanley Kubrick. And now this is where things get crazy. Kubrick was an American filmmaker and was shooting a movie called Barry Lyndon. In this movie, Kubrick wanted to lay entire scenes completely lit by candlelight, which today with our modern sensors, that doesn't sound so bad, but in the 1970s, the only film stock that was available was 100 ISO. So every single photon of light was pretty much essential. Stanley's executive producer, Jan Harlan, would reach out to Zeiss and speak to their head of the photo department, perfectly named Dr. Camera, who pretty much told them that they couldn't use this lens on any movie camera. But Cooper could not take no for an answer. He bought the lenses anyways and brought them to cinema legend Ed D. Julio, inventor of cinema products like the Steadicam. Just like I mentioned before with the X-ray lenses. Uh, we would have to damn near wreck your camera and make it purely dedicated to do this. And he said, fine, go ahead and do it. Kubrick would use this camera along with some special custom made candles that had three wicks instead of one. These candles would burn much brighter, but way faster. Uh, a pain in the neck. You have to watch on editing that they're going to go up and down. Between the lenses and the candles, it was just enough to pull off this truly impressive feat. Hey, just a short intermission here, but I just want to thank you all for watching. If you didn't know, I just created this channel only a few months ago, and I'm still kind of figuring out this whole YouTube thing out. So if you want to help me make more videos and grow this channel, I'd appreciate you could give this video a like. And if you haven't yet and want to stay in touch for future videos, consider subscribing. Anyways, back to the regular scheduled content. Now this next lens may have the largest call following amongst any lens I know, and may be the only lens in this list that's actually practical and obtainable. However, the history of this lens is really quite bizarre. For this lens, we have to go back to the Soviet Russia in the 1940s. Now, during this time, the Soviets were a powerhouse for mechanical might. However, some of their designs were quite questionable, such as their 2B1 Oka, a 60-foot barrel tank that would break its own transmission after firing once, or the E-Kit, which is this aircraft that looks like a spaceship. So instead, the Soviets just started borrowing other people's designs, like the 2-4 plane, which is a bolt-for-bolt -bolt copy of the Boeing B-29 Super Fortress or the IMZ Euro sidecar motorcycle, which is a near carbon copy of the BMW R7. So how does this relate to lenses? Well, you see, before World War II, the Russian army was getting all their optical instruments from companies like Zeiss, Leica, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, and Pentax, all of which were developed by Axis power countries, also known as the bad guys. So on February 1st, 1942, the Russians opened their own optical factory known as the, I don't even know if I can say this one, <laughs> the Krasnogorsk Mechanical Works, or the KMZ for short. If we fast forward a few years, Russia would occupy East Germany. And by no surprise, the Russians started helping themselves to a lot of things. This included dismantling the entire Zeiss Jena optical plant and transporting it back to Russian territory. They took the machines, workers, and most importantly, lens designs. Amongst the designs was the highly renowned Carl Zeiss Biotar, a 58mm f2 lens. So what did the Russians do with this new technology they just acquired? Well, in 1958, they created the very first Helios 44 lens, a 58 f2 lens. Sounds familiar, right? Pretty much a cheap knockoff of the Biotar and was mass produced until 1999 across seven variations. However, the most loved variation is the Helios 44 II, which had eight aperture blades instead of 13 from the original design. The lens was sharp and contrasty, but the most notable characteristic was its unique swirl bokeh, which many fell in love with. However, even though it was a Zeiss design, it was not a Zeiss made product. The lens is known to have tons of issues, such as oil on the aperture blades and loosely fitting mounts. But if you decide you want this piece of history anyways, you can find this lens today for about 50 to $100 on eBay. We all know the holy trinity of lenses. The fast 2.8 zooms that are usually a 16 to 35, a 24 to 70, and a 70 to 200 lens. 
But what if there was one missing lens from this equation that really should have been the holy square of lenses? Well, Sigma took one from the Russian books and made a camera equivalent of the 2B1 Oka tank, the Sig Monster 200 to 500 f 2.8 full frame lens, a green 35 pound 28.6 inch long giant of a lens. This isn't a lens that mounts to a camera. This is a lens where a camera mounts to it. And just like the IKEA manuals, Sigma recommends that you need at least two people to operate this lens properly. It requires its own battery for powering its internal focusing system and has a slot for dropping in 72 millimeter filters. It also comes with a two times teleconverter that converts this lens into a 400 by 1000 millimeter lens if you really need that extra reach. Another thing to note on this lens is that you need to be very careful to not point this lens at the sun. To make this very clear, Sigma wrote this in their manual three times. The lens is capable of melting your sensor, starting a fire, or worst case scenario of blinding you forever. The lens has an MSRP of $26,000, but it does include free shipping. So it's not that bad. <laughs> now that you've seen the SIG Monster, you're probably thinking there's no possible way that there can be a bigger lens than this. But let me just spoil that for you now because there definitely is one and it's capable of doing this. That's right, this is a Canon Canon, a 5200mm f14 lens, the absolute heaviest lens I'm aware of, weighing at a whopping 220 pounds. You can see up to 52 kilometers away and has a minimum focusing range of 400 feet. However, after hours of digging, I could not find the intended purpose of this lens, besides that it was built for SLR cameras in mind. However, I think we can speculate that this lens must have been for a satellite or some type of astrophotography. This lens popped up on eBay in 2009 for a whopping $45,000, which had a description that I found pretty humorous. It's fair to say that it's a collector's item and an attraction in itself. For Canon collectors, quite simply, your Canon collection is incomplete without it. With that to note, there's only three of these lenses in existence, which leaves me with a slightly uneasy feeling. Ooh. Now, there's definitely some more crazy lenses out there. If you want a part two to the series, let me know some of the craziest lenses that you know of in the comments. And if you like this video, you should definitely check out my last video where I talk about some of the craziest camera flops of all time, like the Kodak handle, which led to an insane $925 million lawsuit, or the Konica AI Borg, where I talk about this Darth Vader looking camera. Anyhow, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Ciao.